think anybody that ever played for him, certainly coached with him, staff members that interfaced with him, and uh, just countless fans. Uh, just it's uh, you know really a sad day, certainly. And um, our thoughts are first and foremost with the, the Fry family. I know how he felt about all his kids and uh, his wife. So tough thing. Uh, just share a little perspective with you. So. I uh, came here in 1981, as is uh, well documented, and I think it really made my perspective a little bit unique. Uh, it's back before the internet. All I really knew is that Iowa didn't have a very good season the year before. Uh, I got this, uh, my, my coach, uh, Joe Moore, his son took us out of the Blue Book, he's had the college Blue Books. I uh, knew that I would have a bad record, and uh, new coach for Iowa was a square joy, ex-Marine, and uh, Texan, you know, that's about all I knew about, about Iowa football. And, and soon, uh, soon thereafter, I learned that uh, they've had 17 straight losing seasons. So to come here and see the impact two years into it without a winning season, uh, just how he had captured the hearts and minds of everybody in the state, most importantly our players and staff, but, um, you know, just the way he had captured this whole state it was really, really impressive. And, uh, you know, all the great things that have happened since that time, you know, just uh, they're all a matter of record. But I think the bottom line is that, you know, every day he set a standard for leadership standard for uh, excellence and also doing things within character and integrity and um, you know that, that's really what uh, just jumped out to me before we ever uh, you know beat Nebraska in that first game or all the great things that happened that 81 season those things were already uh, pretty prominent after being here for just a very brief time and I, I think my story is probably like a lot of the guys that uh, coached with before Coach Fry and probably like a lot of players you know he took a shot on me uh, I, I didn't have a resume uh, that would merit, merit really opportunity here. He took a chance on me. And then more importantly, uh, you know, once I was here, he served as a mentor and a role model, I think, on a daily basis. And uh, since, you know, since that time, he's also been a cherished friend. So, you know, I can't say enough about uh, the role that he played in my, my life and my family's life. And again, I think I speak for, for so many people. So many people coach for him, uh, play for him. So, you know, the real, you know, the real story is this coach Fry. You know, he's just a really uh, impressive person, truly unique and truly uh, charismatic. And the guy just did a uh, unbelievable job here. But more importantly, the way he impacted so many, so many people, and uh, certainly in the football family, uh, that's really evident. But, uh, it's hard to go up anywhere and not run into people that somehow, some way have a coach Fry story. It's just uh, his reach was really, really unbelievable from that standpoint. So. Really, my only regret, I told the team, is I just, I'm really sorry none of them ever got to, uh, you know, stand in front of him, have a chance to meet him, and listen to some of his, his stories and just have him address the team, because uh, any time he did that, that was always a special thing, and, uh, you know, this is something I'll always appreciate, and obviously remember, so I'm sorry none of them had that opportunity. Fortunately, some of our coaches have had that opportunity. And last thing, I just, uh, we will honor Coach Fry the final way. We're kicking a couple ideas around for the bowl game. Uh, we'll have more on that next week. We'll be able to fill in on that and certainly uh, plan to do something for next season too uh, on a broader scale. So uh, with that, I'll just take a couple questions and I, I know I need to get on the plane and head to San Diego here. So I'll just throw it out for any questions you may have. Is there anything you're, that Hayden had happen or is there anything you're jealous of with Hayden? Is there anything like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have done that? No, I mean, there's, there's so many things he did that I, I wouldn't ever begun to think about, let alone actually do. And I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is a tiger hawk. That's a national, uh, worldwide, actually, uh, logo. And uh, there wasn't a tiger hawk prior to him coming. Uh, the ANS sticker. I mean, things like that. He just had such a uh, a vision and such an ability to sell and convince people that you know this this is worth doing or worth thinking about. And uh, you know, I mean, I've said it many times. We're so opposite in terms of personality. He's funny, charismatic. Uh, I'm neither, uh, but he's also a visionary, and I'm, I, that's not one of my strengths, but any strength, so uh, any, any stretch. So, yeah, I think that that's really, I mean, that, that, that was what was clear to me two years into this thing. I go to my first high school game and see Tiger Hawks everywhere, uh, and I, I wasn't familiar with that, uh, you know, growing up in Pennsylvania. So it was just, uh, it was just clear. You know, everybody was believing, and then he actually delivered uh, in that year and then, you know, for many years to follow. It takes a strong little person to be able to, uh, work with a lot of people like themselves and, and to have that kind of staff, especially the one you were a part of early on, and yet uh, to be able to manage that. Uh, how was he able to do that, you think, and do it so well? And how did he help everybody kind of grow as coaches? 
you know, we were all different. We all came from different backgrounds, at least the staff that I joined in 81. Uh, but the commonality is, and I, I, I did, you know, I thought a lot about the nine years I was gone, you know, why that happened, what, what, uh, what made that, that whole period so, uh, so possible, you know. And, and I think, you know, every, every guy, you look at the resume, every guy on that staff, the 81 staff, not, none of us had residents, really. I mean, we were low pedigree guys, and, uh, you know, for, for some reason he took a chance on each and every one of us. He selected us all. And uh, well, I'll tell you, there was great unity in that room any time we were in there together. And he was at the head of the table. There's no clear, no question about who was in charge and who was setting, uh, setting the bar and, and setting expectations. But you know, I think we were all, I think he saw all of us uh, as young, some of us were young, some weren't as young. Uh, but we were all interested in winning and all interested in doing the best we could as coaches. And uh, he, he really showed us how to do things. When Hayden, when Hayden was hiring you guys, none, you said none of you had resumes, and that is true. Um, did he, uh, did he did he coach you guys to coach? Did he was he kind of your mentor? Yeah, he made suggestions <laughs> <laughs> every now and then. A lot of times after it was something that would happen, but no, I'm joking on that. But no, yeah, he always there, there was just uh, yeah clear. There was no uh, lack of clarity in terms of the way he wanted to do things. And uh, this is no knock on where I'd come from, but it's just a totally different uh, environment at the University of Pittsburgh when I was there in 1980. Um, and, and the makeup of our team was very different. Uh, but uh, when I got here, it was really clear that the team was together, the players were together, the staff was together, everything, everything about everything here was together. We were going one direction. And not none of us, at least I don't think any of those guys uh, that were here knew what was going to happen in 81. I don't think anybody could have predicted that. Um, but it just it happened. And uh, you know, to me, it was the thing that was clear to me, I, the players, um, when I watch those guys pray, like they, these guys were tired of losing. They were sick of losing, and they were determined to do something about it. And probably the Michigan game is uh, as good an illustration as any. Could they throw the ball a little bit? Uh, they had Carter on their team. You know, they might have won by 21 to whatever it was, nine. They chose to run it, and you know, you could run the ball. So we were not going to let you do that. And, uh, we mustered up three field goals and played them, played them tough. You know, for 60 minutes, and found a way to win. To me, that was a real hallmark win. The Nebraska upset was great. But, UCLA great, but that, that was a real program center, if you will. And uh, you know, we played the way we played. And, you know, but there, there was no, nobody was nervous going in. I mean, we were all confident we were going to go out there and play well. And that was due to him. He, he instilled that in everybody. What was he like for you when you did, when you were hired? Did you talk to him about the job first of all, and then what was the transition? I think things happened fast. You know, when all that was going on, uh, we had a brief conversation and. Um, you know, he certainly didn't hurt my chances. I know I don't want to speak for him, but I think the whole hope for him was to, to keep it in the family. I think he was hopeful that someone in the Ohio family would be the next person to uh, take it over. And uh, afterwards, uh, you couldn't ask for a better, um, uh, you know, someone to follow. I mean, you know, if you follow a guy who's a legendary coach, a Hall of Fame coach, he couldn't have been better, couldn't have been more supportive. In fact, he was too uninvolved. I mean, it was hard to get him in front of our team for quite a while. Uh, he just wanted to give me my space and my distance, and um, you know, I mean, he was way too respectful of what we were trying to do. And he did give me some good advice. He said, "Move to the country if you get the chance." And uh, I remember he was walking out of the, the door. I caught him just as he's walking out the door one afternoon. I mean, this is like in May, I think. We're trying to, you know, start getting serious about finding a house. But he says, "Yeah, if you can move out there, do that." And that's great advice for him. That's why I might get away. That is my house in Florida, or Colorado. It's uh, right out. I'm very ashamed. So, um, but yeah, I mean, nothing that's important and helpful. Probably too, probably too far extent, you know, just, uh, you know, I've always been appreciative of that. Did you feel the responsibility to carry on what you had? Every day. Started? Yeah, I mean, every day. Did you say the story close or did you share? You know, I'll follow up on that. I mean, just like, you know, we all have mentors. And, um, you know, so, you know, it starts at home, usually with your parents, and then, you know, people age you up more and they thrive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I got, you know, it took me 25 years, I got a window now. So, you know, he's looking at me and Rita every day. So, both of us better be on good behavior and better be, you know, moving straight ahead. So, that's, that's how you look at it. Yeah, that's how you look at it. Favorite story? Oh, yeah, give me some time on that. And there's a million of them, so, you know, yeah, they're all good. I mean, you know, first time I met him, it's just, he's one, as you guys know, he's one of those people you, you sit down and you feel like you've known him 15 years. Just makes you feel at ease and, you know, somehow, some way, the chemistry match, but he made it an easy day for me. And uh, I've always appreciated that because I'm not sure I would have been ready for a tough interview. What was it, what was it like to pass on the list of big time? Uh, 
I really haven't given much thought. And I just, uh, uh, as I probably said, whenever it happened, uh, to me it's just a byproduct of being in a really good place with really good people. And one of the reasons, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll finish with this, we got to go. But I'll, I'll just throw this out, and I don't know the answer. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody right now that's had 17 straight losing seasons and maybe college football. I doubt it. And if they have, they probably had a bunch of coaches. Uh, but think about that in this modern day terms. Uh, I say modern day, it's 20 some years later, 30, uh, 39, 40, 41. Uh, but 17 straight losing seasons, you know, that, that's bad. Okay? I mean, that's, that's something for them. And, you know, it starts at Pump Elliott and then the hard coach try. But to take a program from that, that level of basically, you know, ineptness to where he moved the Iowa football program in the next 20 years, um, I mean, you know, that's a storybook finish. And, you know, I was really off the pickle book when I got here. I had no idea what I was walking into. Uh, but I just walked into it at the perfect time. So, you know, you think about what, what he accomplished. And then, again, beyond the football part of it, what he just, you know, I mean, it, it's just hard to go anywhere where people don't love Coach Wright. And there's good reason. He's just a really endearing person. Um, you know, did so much for the state beyond the football part. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's pretty significant. Pretty significant to me. It's historic. The other thing I'll just I'll leave with this, uh, you know, I've always said this too, that, you know, you study the Big Ten, it was 13 years of two teams going to the Rose Bowl. And since uh, 1981, I think uh, all but two of the original members have gone now. So that, that started in 1981. It took a historic coach to break that ice. And, uh, you know, same thing with, you know, recruiting Jerry Levice. I mean, he broke a lot of barriers and just, you know, he's, he's just a really unique, special person. So, uh, again, I'm my, my most, uh, First and foremost, thoughts are with the family. But, but everybody that played and coached with him, you know, just, it's, uh, it's one of those things. You know, and we all, you know, it's like your dad. I mean, you know, your dad's not going to live forever, but we all hope they do.